Hey guys, we take a closer look at Orin's Tarot by Ambison, um, an Australian illustrator, I believe. So this is the second edition. It's 78 cards of unique celestial animal representing natures. These decks have been produced environmentally friendly in every way and goes further to support the Rainforest Trust, which is awesome. So this is what in general what the box will look like. It's quite a simplistic design overall where you've got the title by the side of the box and the illustrator as well and then you get this nice message at the back that pretty much explains the cards so these cards are very new to me i've only had them for a few days so i'm still working with them building a connection with each cards this is what it looks like when you open the box up it doesn't come with a guidebook my edition well didn't but um you do get a digital copy of it which pretty much explains each cards in details what's also a nice touch is you get this nice little message inside of the box may the stars guide you in the dark which is quite fairly nice and then on the other box as well you get a similar message this deck is um sort of like made in gratitude and dedicated to um the author's stars which is quite fairly nice the cards do come gilded in I don't know, it's like a red, crimson, crimson or maroon sort of colour. I'll give you a closer look of what it looks like gilded, which is in my favourite colour, um, red. It looks very nice. Um, tracks a lot of dust though. And this is what the back of the cards will look like. Very beautiful design of a um, what seems like a compass. And then if you look closer, you could see there's a sh two shadowy figure there. So like you could see the head... And then the shadow and the body kind of blends into the center of that compass there. If you look very closely, you could see there's a face figure there. Very nice design overall. In terms of the finish, it's a matte finish, which is very nice. And then inside of the card as well, just to show you the general finish again is matte very nice the cards in the hand feels very comfortable very nice uh, and easy to hold the cards are not so slippery and you know they've got a nice touch to it very comfortable overall uh, stock wise they're on the mediumish size not so thin but overall the quality i think it's pretty excellent so they're quite flexible but not cheap so let's have a look at our major arcanas. These are very beautiful and unique cards on their own. Very different, which is what I love about them. Um, the cards has this rich symbolism to them and it's naturally, it naturally tends to activate one intuition, I feel. The image draws you into its own story. It looks absolutely mystical. Um, we have the Fool card. Our first three card, the Fool, Magician and High Priestess. The Fool card, we have what looks like a sea turtle. And it's breaking free of its egg. So um, I suppose being the fool, you're embarking on a new journey of life into the unknown, unaware of what awaits you. So that's beautiful. The magician, you have two pair of snakes, different color bodies wrapping around a sword and staff, but also sort of like tightly wrapped around each other, forming a knot. Interesting card. I need to understand that one more. The High Priestess, you have a she-wolf standing between two pillars. Not sure if it's guarding the entrance or waiting to welcome you through another path or realm. Wolf tends to represent mystery, so I guess that that's the High Priestess um, meaning of that one. Uh, next three cards, we have the Empress, Emperor and Hierophant. Gorgeous cards. The Empress... That looks um looks like a stalk spreading its wings, displaying its beauty, its feminine feminine energy, I'm I'm presuming here. Again, these are fairly new. I need to kind of gain a better understanding of each card. The Emperor. We have an elephant standing firm in place, strongly staring at you as well, showing no fear as most leader of elephants do. Powerful stance. Nice uh, bright gold tusk. Hierophant, we have a ram standing posed between two pillars. Again, we've got a triangle in the background. Look, looking pretty aggressive, laying down its turf, I suppose. And then the lovers, and we've got the chariot. The lovers, you have what seems like 
two seahorses looking beautifully together in a pink glow and blue. Very, very nice. They're kind of like intertwined, like they are embracing each other in harmony. I feel here with the triangle sort of like opposition in each other. Beautiful image. And our chariot here, it looks like an eagle. Yeah, an eagle standing tall and proud, powerful on top of a compass symbol. Looking commanding overall, a lot of self-confidence in this card, I feel. Okay, our next two cards, we have the Justice Hermit, and also one next to it is the Wheel of Fortune. So let's have a look at our Justice card. Wow, a great owl stands tall there between balanced scales. Gosh, you got this sword right there, dead in center in the middle. Very powerful owl. It looks very focused with its eyes and well composed. A very sort of like spiritual creature. Hermit is a lynx sitting what seems as though it's a mountain, a triangle, looking all sort of patient and reflecting on its direction, I suppose, to go. Our wheel of fortune is scarab, I think, um, dead in the center of the wheel. It's got its wings sticking out. I guess it's waiting to go off, take off to its destined direction or the path that faith opens up for it we've got the strength hangman and then the death card the strength card is a reindeer standing firm dead center also it's um its horn is kind of like glowing or beaming with this warm gold energy you have this diamond symbol on top of its head bright as well the hangman or hang one a bird not sure what type, but it's hanging there with its wings extended, but not really being held there. It's as though it's doing it on its own, having a different perspective. The death is a pair of fish swimming around a pond, tails into wine, different colours. Looks as though they've formed a, what do you call it, a spiral showcasing the cycle of life. We've got the temperance and the devil. Temperance... You've got a crab all lit up in warm yellow, centred in a triangle, but also there is a smaller triangle in what in gold within a square shape looks like it's in control and knows exactly where it's going the devil card you have a praying mantis climbing up this plant avoiding flames below but you have a star symbol within that plant so maybe it's not as safe as it looks and there's actually more danger there so let's take a look at our last major cards this is what they look like closer look our first three the tower the star judgment well really that should be the moon position but it's our last card so let's have a closer look the tower very strange tower um what's the lionfish i think um a lionfish swimming all brightly lit in warm colors i guess the tower and the danger is the fish itself known to be very poisonous best to avoid if possible an interesting way of a tower, I like it. The star looks like a jellyfish hovering near the compass symbol. It just all looks and feels fairly simple, positive and graceful movement. So it's like a very nice card. The judgment card, um, we've got an insect that seem to be making an offering. And then you've got the red flowers there that seems to represent the trumpet of judgment. Our last three cards, we've got the moon, the sun, and the world. Moon, oh my god, that's a gorgeous image. The moon, you have a rabbit in movement in the night sky, a lit up moon flowing with the colors of the flowers. But two flowers there look very dangerous to me. So maybe there's hidden dangers that the rabbit is not aware of. Look at it, its innocent face there. The sun looks fantastic, bright in every way, warm and colourful, full of joy in it, prosperity all around. I love it, nice representation of the sun. Uh, a last card, the well, pair of fish swimming around in flow around the earth. One looking in front, one looking at the back, very balanced, cycle of life. So now we're going to take a look at our cups. These will be our suits of cups. First two cards we have is the Ace of Cups and then we have the Two of Cups. For the Ace of Cups, we have what looks like an auto floating in a pond. It's holding a cup with flower, 
two flowers by the sides, uh, one of each side of, of him. He's just drifting there peacefully, it seems. And then our two of cups is two penguins facing each other with different energy color within them. And you've got a cup that's perfectly in between them. So they're perfectly balanced. And then the sun and the moon in the background, just like beautifully vibrating there. Our three of cups and then our four of cups. For three of cups, you have three little toddlers emerging from, um, emerging from cups that seems like they're leaves or flowers. A happy lot there. For our four, we have something resting in a chalice with three other cups underneath with the background of beaming light and emitting from it. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, five of cups, you have five locuses around five cups. Seems as though they're exploring or eating away. It's hard to tell, but it looks as though they're just kind of around and exploring those various cups. So that's our first five cards. Our number six and seven of cups. Six of cups, you have two goats that just sits in a large sort of blue color cup with flowers around with other cups, looking very, very innocent, but yet very happy and playful. And our seven of cups, a narwhal swimming, maybe deep in the ocean in between the seven of cups with its horn in front vibrating in this warm yellow sort of energy. Uh, eight of cups and our nine of cups Eight of Cups has this cuttlefish navigating in between the cups, which looks like they are sinking and some are also floating upwards. It's got various different energy colors surrounding it. Our um, Nine of Cups, you've got this poodle looking all special and royal, just sitting there on a cushion with a golden sort of like necklace around its neck with Nine of Cups above its head in bright gold. Looks very confident and proud. And for our 10, we have three foxes. Seems like as though it's a family just in their nests, feeling secure and happy, playing together with the 10 of cups above their head. Very nice. Okay, so here is our court cards of cups. Our first two cards there, we've got the page of cups and then we have the knight of cups. It looks like a lot is going on in that um, page of cups. It looks like a united effort of fishes. Um, and also the indication of fast movement as well. A lot of engagement is going on there. With a cup in the center. And then we've got the knight of cups. A bird standing on top of a golden cup. Seems pretty content. As though it's also singing away. A very... Colourful, graceful image of that one. We have our Queen of Cups and then we have our King of Cups. Top view of both of the cards. A very unusual um, Queen of Cups. A snail on top of a mushroom where it's planted in a cup. And for our King, we've got a flamingo balancing on one leg with a golden cup on its back. You also have what looks like the sun as well, which is kind of radiating energy. To me, the card represents balance or composure. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at our wands suits. Gorgeous cards. We've got the ace of wands and then we have the two of wands. Our ace of wands, we have what looks like a dragonfly with its beautiful wings lit up warm in that glowing yellowness. Looks like it's in a pond surrounding, um, getting on with its task. Not really getting much from this image. But again, these cards are fairly new to me. Two birds or blue jays with twigs being carried. I guess they are working together and building something. We've got our three of wands and then our four of wands. Not sure what type of animal that is is in the three of wands but it's looking out um it seems to towards the world its surroundings and it also has three twigs or wands clogged in its tails i guess it's been productive 
the four of wands, a bird sitting and waiting in this kind of beautiful area. Four of wands tends to be about celebration, so maybe it's waiting on a ceremony to start or waiting on its mate. Five of wands, no idea what this is, but it's surrounded or trapped by the wands. Uh, I guess the ones are in the way. Five of ones tend to be about conflicts or competition, I guess. I'm not sure what animal that is. I need to look at it up. So that's our first five. If we take a look at our next lot, six of ones, and then we've got our seven of ones. A beautiful peacock sitting right in the center of that image there, as though it's putting itself on display for everyone to see how prosperous and glorious it is. Very gorgeous image there of the peacock, right dead center there, not shying away. The seven of wands, no idea what that is, jeez. But it's wrapped itself around these seven weeds, which I guess is the wands. You can tell by counting underneath there, there's like seven of them at the roots. And then we've got our eight of wands and our nine of wands. Uh, the Eight of Wands looks like a falcon dodging eight arrows in the sky. It's very capable. Falcons are known to be the fastest birds. So fast movement, um, fast action going on in terms of the Eight of Wands. It looks fairly comfortable. It's like dead ahead looking, knowing where it's going. Nine of Wands, a horse raised up with background of the sun being pierced by nine wands. Horse always symbolizes freedom. Nine of Wands tends to be standing tall during times of difficulty. Makes sense. And our Ten of Wands, a gorgeous beaver, hard at work, uh, sorting through the sticks. Ten of Wands is pretty much about burdens and responsibility that one has um, taken on. Gorgeous. Here are our court cards of the Wands. Our first two cards are the Page of Wands and then we've got the Knight of Wands. Uh, the Page of Wands, we have, what's that, a red panda, I believe, on a, br on a branch. It's hanging upside down. It seems relaxed and it's also eating. The card has this very bright beaming sun energy as well to it. We have the Knight of Wands. Um, has a dolphin with a wand brightly litted, tucked between its body. And then you've got this sort of like energy of water that seems to be going across and on top of its body. We've got the Queen of Wands and then we have our King of Wands. The Queen of Wands is a chinchilla. It looks like it's clutching out a piece of plant um, branch. There's a lot of energy inside of its body radiating as well. Interesting. Um, you have our king, a very strong, powerful lion. Real strong masculine energy uh, you, you can get from that one. And a massive staff, powerful in its own right. We have our pentacle suits. Um, we've got the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. For the Ace of Pentacles, um, we've got a frog rested on the pentacle with flowers around it. Maybe it's in a pond as well. It's looking out ahead also, gazing away. I guess it's waiting for an opportunity, that opportunity. And it looked kind of glass as well. Two of pentacles, a goat leaping over the, a pentacle from a rock. It's really outstretched itself, reaching up. I guess it's jiggling its way around the pentacles. And then we have the three of pentacles, three ants collecting the pentacles. They look as though they're working together to achieve what they need. So you've got coalition, partnership here, one standing on top of the other, they're helping each other out. That's our three. And then we have our four of pentacles, an armadillo curled itself around a pentacle that's glowing um, nice and warm. It's really holding on to that one. It's not letting go. We've got our five, a polar bear, all alone it seems, stuck on what could be a melting ice. 
time is running out. It's funny because there's land behind of it. I'm not sure it, it sees that, but then it's the Five of Pentacles. It's time going ahead. So that was our five there on top and our six on the bottom. We have the six of pentacles. Three cute little meerkats there. Looks as though they're keeping watch. Or, well, just two of them, I guess, are assisting to keep watch with what looks like an elder one behind of them. Very cute. And then you've got the pentacles on top and at the bottom there. And then we have our seven of pentacles. Um, looks like a raven. Um, at its nest, watching out as well, protecting its eggs, as I presume. It seems very patient as well, just, just sitting there. Our eight and our uh, nine of pentacles. Eight, we have a bird that's w working away um, at its nest. It has these pentacles kind of like encased. And then at the background, um, it seems as though you have sort of like various other work that it's done and, and that it's completed. Very much great job overall at its task. The nine, you have a cat playing with a ball and it's surrounded by pentacles. But also there's this kind of like window frame in the background. Overall it looks rewarding as a number nine. And the ten of pentacles we have a whale that's diving deep into the ocean floor with the pentacles sitting there that's been discovered or to be discovered and how two others are coming down. Here are our court pentacles. We have the page of pentacles and then we have our knight. Top view of the two cards. And we'll take a closer look at each of them. So our page of pentacles uh, what is that cricket? I think we've got a cricket sitting on top of a uh, of the pentacle with a blooming f flowers around it, and our knight of pentacles, a bumblebee, on what looks like a half of a honeycomb, with a pentacle in the center and flowers surrounding it. Looks as though it's just working away doing its job as usual. Queen of pentacles. Oh my goodness! I have no idea what. Um, that animal is called oh I can't remember but we've all got our queen of pentacles and then we've got our king of pentacles with the queen of pentacles looks as though it's just sort of sitting all warm down because of the yellow energy around its body glowing surrounded by plants and then our king of pentacles is a massive bull Glowing with energy again, with also a huge pentacle radiating out that energy. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at our um, sword suits. First two cards is the Ace of Sword and the Two of Swords. Our Ace of Sword looks like a warm, powerful swan What's it, with its wings raised in a pond with the sword going or pointing down behind its wings. Very majestic animals. Our two of swords, looks like a, looks beautiful to me, beautiful fish. It looks like the fish is deciding between the two swords. Uh, its eyes shows exactly how focused it is. And the swords are in a stalemate. Three of swords, looks very dangerous. The bird flying or trying to and avoiding the three of swords that looks very painfully sharp, blocking its way. I don't know how I feel about this one. It could have been much stronger representing the three of swords. So yeah, I'm not sure about that one. The four of swords, you have a, what, what do you call those? Seof, Seof, uh, um, just hanging there onto the last two swords, resting overall. A five of swords is a manta ray swimming away from the swords, but also it looks as though its tail is wrapped around the third sword. It's like, I guess it can't escape the sword. Regardless, it's like a tricky situation. It's still going to be following it. That's our five of swords. It's the first five lot. And let's look at our next five. We have the six of swords and our seven of swords. 
The Six of Sword. My God, that looks very painful. The fish is being pierced by the swords. Yeah, at the same time, it it looks I don't know. It doesn't look as though it's in pain. It just looks upset. It looked like angry, the eyes and everything. But somehow it's still moving forward. But it just doesn't seem too happy. I know I wouldn't. The Seven of Swords, Spider, um, maybe a Black Widow. But it's as though it's carefully crossing the swords. Very sharp swords with that glow in them and um, of the edges. We've got our Eight of Swords and our Nine of Swords. Um, what is that? A, I guess it's a mole sleeping. But yeah, it seems as though it's protected by this kind of orb. Um... But also you have this, uh, the swords kind of like jabbing in place or jabbed in place. It looks as though it's trapped or it's in prison and it's pretty much got no other option but to kind of sleep and stay where it is. The Nine of Swords. We have a centipede winding its way through the swords, avoiding the sharpness, being skillful. Well, even though there's like certain elements of doom in there. Um, ouch. The Ten of Swords for sure. A starfish where you have a sword impaling in its center limb with the rest around it. It looks brutal and pretty severe. That's very painful. And here is our court cards of the swords. We've got the page of swords and then we've got the knight of swords. Absolutely gorgeous image. The page of swords... We have one of the parrot species, I'm not sure which one in particular, but it's, stand, it's standing very firm on the blade. Also, there's like an indication of different direction point. Sword is pointing one end, but it's looking on the other side. Our knight of sword, bird flying past fast, it seems, a lot of fast movements, shooting stars as well. Image of uh, the sword tucked behind its wings. We've got our Queen of Swords. The Queen is a hummingbird sitting on the pommel of a sword and looking or gazing out to the universe. Um, but also two flowers there that's kind of intertwining with the, with the sword. And then we have our Crow as the King. Again, similar but looking the opposite side. Um, very intelligent bird. To me, this image is like the crow is looking into the future and the queen is looking at back at the past. So that was it, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this close look up um, of the cards. Uh, I know this was a long video, but hopefully you've enjoyed it and, you know, you've got to see the cards as much as you can. Watch out for the next one. And, you know, if you guys have any questions, by all means, just uh, comment and let me know. Have a good one.